So Francis shows a lot of the signs of post-traumatic stress, but we believe that this is where God intervened. Over a decade ago, uh, a journalist wrote a book on St. Francis. The journalist's name was Paul Moses. And he was writing primarily about St. Francis and the Sultan of Egypt. But in writing his book, he uh, went back and looked at the life of St. Francis through at least one unique point of view. And that was that Francis was a young man who had known violence. As a youth, Francis was caught up in the social upheavals in his town of Assisi and may have taken part in a, a violent episode where the, the people of Assisi stormed the castle, the, we call it the Rocca Maggiore, uh, up above the city that would have protected this medieval city. But the, the people of, a city, uh, of the city were rebelling against the powers and forces of the emperor. We believe that that was a very violent situation and Francis, as a teenager, may have taken part in this, this storming of this, uh, this fortress and would have participated at least remotely somehow in the bloodshed of that. Then some time later, when Assisi went to war against its neighboring city of Perugia, there was a, a, a battle and Francis and his fellow soldiers from Assisi were on the losing side and he was imprisoned for a year. In the, this battle uh, at a place called Colostrada, we suspect that Francis probably was responsible for killing some people. Then he's thrown into a situation where he is kept um, in, in, we say prison, but it, it probably was a miserable uh, kind of a, a pit or some sort of really, really uh, terrible conditions and was for a year. Uh, the Perugians felt that some of the wealthier sons of Assisi could bring in a ransom from their parents back in Assisi. So uh, they were keeping Francis in, in view of a ransom. So here you have a man who has, who has done violence, experienced violence, been a perpetrator perhaps of violence himself, who is now in a year-long um, situation where he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. You know, it's not like he's in a comfortable cell just waiting for dad to bail him out. You know, obviously he had a lot of questions, you know, and he, he, he was dealing with the remorse, the feelings of the battle, what, you know, the un unpredictability of that, all the things that we know in warfare down through the centuries have profoundly affected the men and women who experienced them. Today, we call it post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a fancy name. In the old days, they had a rather graphic name of shell shock. We have St. Francis of Assisi, a man who has been in battle, who's shed blood, who's been imprisoned, and he carries all of that experience with him into a time of introspection, a time of soul searching, a time of, of wondering who he is and who God is. It's obvious to us as we read about St. Francis that he exhibits classic symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, isolating himself, uh, nightmares. And now in the hagiography, the, the uh, kind of glorification of saints in literature, Francis has visions, visions of demons, you know, things like that. Without you know, doing uh, injustice to the work of God, I think we could say perhaps that this might have been symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Uh, nightmares, you know, a, a soldier wakes up in the middle of the night, you know, screaming, uh, reliving the battle. Uh, Francis may have done that. Uh, where does he go right after his conversion? He goes to Gubbio, the famous place of the story of the Wolf of Gubbio, but that's that's a, not as important to me as the fact that Francis went to Gubbio because one of his fellow veterans lived there. And where do, uh, again, military people find comfort, but in support groups, pe groups of veterans, people they can talk to who have experienced the same thing. So Francis shows a lot of the signs of post-traumatic stress, 
But the important thing for our story, and Paul Moses in his book brings out uh, by interviews with military experts, the reality of this for Francis. But the important thing for us is that what happened to Francis in the midst of all of this, we believe that this is where God intervened. Uh, we see it in things like the encounter with the leper, the crucifix of San Damiano where Francis heard God speak to him. We see it in his confrontation with his father uh, and giving up of all his possessions and saying, you know, Father B Pietro Bernardoni, these, I give this all back to you. You know, now I want to father, follow our Father in heaven. We see that God was at work in this man and even trying to go back and being a soldier once more uh, after the terrible Perugian experience of prison, he, he tries once more and there's a vision there that he experiences. So there were a whole series of events that make up Francis' conversion. It wasn't a one and done thing. It was a gradual process. But in that, he encounters God. He knows that somehow God has, is willing to accept Francis, uh, show Francis that he is a person who is, is worthwhile in the sight of God, even despite all of the things that have gone before. And that not only rebuilding the church, but God is gonna help Francis rebuild his own, own self, his own identity. And from that experience comes the, uh, the, the birth of the Franciscan movement. And it wasn't, again, I don't think it was something that was over and done for Francis in that, you know, in that conversion time. I think he must have, like any uh, person in the, uh, who has post-traumatic stress, this might be something that continually needs to be faced and dealt with. It's, it's a recovery process. So we can learn a lot from Francis, and I think we can learn a sensitivity to people who have experienced trauma. Uh, we can learn a lot about, of course, a particular group like our, our military veterans, and the Franciscans sponsor pilgrimages to Assisi where uh, they're led by uh, uh, experts in psychology, uh, military chaplains, and, and others who can talk the talk uh, of what's going on. And these are powerful experiences, I'm told, uh, for, for veterans to encounter someone as, as well-known and as holy and as uh, accessible as Francis of Assisi and find in him a, a brother who walks with them in their trauma.